Greetings and welcome back to the channel of your friendly neighborhood integral solver. We have quite an integral today. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine x times log sine x divided by 1 plus root 1 plus sine square x dx, that is. And the first thing we notice here is... God damn it, that is one hell of an integral. I mean, seriously, what are we even supposed to do? Where do we start? Well, we have sine x terms everywhere, so we might as well try the substitution that is letting sine x equal t. This implies that x here equals arc sine t, which implies that dx equals dt divided by root 1 minus t squared. Now, what about the limits? Well, as x approaches pi by 2, we have t approaching 1, and as x approaches 0, we have t approaching 0. So that means the target integral i is now the integral from 0 to 1 of t times the logarithm of t divided by root 1 plus t squared. Terribly sorry about that. Much better. And we have dt divided by root 1 minus t, squ t squared. Now, we could try combining the terms in the square roots. So we have integral 0 to 1 t log t divided by root 1 plus t squared times 1 minus t squared dt. And that works out quite nicely to the integral from 0 to 1 of t log t divided by root 1 minus t to the fourth power dt. And now, the integral looks slightly more hospitable. We might as well try another transformation here, and that is letting t to the fourth power equal u, which implies that t here equals u to the quarter, and dt equals a quarter times u to the negative three quarters du. And the limits are clearly not altered, so we have the target integral i equal to integral zero to one. We will have a fact we will have a factor of a quarter outside because of the differential element. T is now u to the quarter, and then we have log u to the one quarter, and using log properties, this turns in, this turns into a coefficient. So we have a quarter squared outside, which is one by sixteen divided by root 1 minus u, and of course we have u to the negative 3 quarters du. Okay, cool. We can clean this up a bit and write i here as 1 by 16 integral 0 to 1 u to the negative u to the quarter minus 3 quarters, which is of course u to the negative 1 half, times 1 minus u to the negative 1 half log u du. And then we run out of bright ideas, so we just call it a day and sort to numerical integration. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and ah, just kidding. We have a very special function that can help us, and that is the beta function with complex arguments z1 and z2. It's expressed as the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the z1 minus 1 times 1 minus u to the z2 minus 1 du. So if I differentiate partially with respect to z1, terribly sorry about that, we get the integral from 0 to 1, and the derivative of u to the z minus 1 with respect to z1 would be the same function repeated times the logarithm of the base u. So we do have a log u term, and we do have the required structure. What we need is basically the partial derivative of the beta function evaluated at z1 equal to z2 exactly equal to what? So we notice that z1 minus 1 should be negative 1 half. So that means z1 should be 1 half, and the same goes for z2. Okay, cool. We multiply that by 1 by 16, and that will give us the target integral i. So that is exactly the plan. We have the beta function, we need to differentiate, differentiate partially with respect to z1, then evaluate the derivative at z1 equal to z2 equal to 1 half. How are we going to do that? 
we call on the beta function's cooler cousin, the gamma function. So we have beta z1, z2 equal to gamma z1 times gamma z2 divided by gamma z1 plus z2. And of course, we're differentiating partially with respect to z1. So we might as well fix z2 equal to 1 half so that we have the beta function at, I'm just going to call z1 here z. And we have one half as the as the other argument. We have gamma z times gamma one half divided by gamma z plus one half, and gamma one half is of course root pi. So we have beta z and one half equal to root pi times gamma z divided by gamma z plus one half. And now all we need to do is differentiate this thing partially with respect to z. So we have partial beta by partial z equal to root pi, and applying the quotient rule gives us partial, sorry about that, gives us derivative, no, it gives us gamma z plus one half. I'm writing it perfectly, but of course talking is a lot harder than doing math. So, we have this thing times gamma prime z minus gamma z times gamma prime z plus one half divided by the square of gamma z plus one half. Okay, cool. And now we call on another very special function and that is the digamma function. Now digamma s equals the derivative with respect to s of log gamma s. So that means we have gamma s downstairs and gamma prime s upstairs, which is pretty cool because this implies that gamma prime s equals gamma s times di gamma s, which is quite nice because we can make use of that relation here now. So we have partial beta by partial z equal to root pi times gamma z plus one half times gamma z times di gamma z minus gamma z times gamma z plus one half times a little bit of writing space needed here. We have di gamma z plus one half. We divide the whole thing by gamma squared z plus one half. And now we can factor out a bunch of stuff. We have root pi factored out. We have gamma z times gamma z plus one half divided by gamma squared z plus one half. So we do notice some nice cancellation, meaning we're left with only gamma z by gamma z plus one half, terribly, sorry about that, times the digamma function at z minus the digamma function at z plus one half. Now the target case was z equal to one half. So we have the target integral equal to one by 16 times this derivative at z equal to one half. So we have root pi by 16 times gamma one half divided by gamma one half plus one half, which is of course one. And then we have di gamma one half minus di gamma one. Okay, cool. So what exactly are the values of the di gamma function at one half and at one half and one? Well, we just saw that gamma s equals gamma prime s divided by gamma s. So for di gamma one half, we need gamma prime one half divided by gamma one half. We know that gamma one half is root pi, and for gamma prime one half, we refer to this sublime shirt you can buy using the link in the description below. And we see that gamma prime at one half is in fact root pi times, rather negative root pi times Euler Mascheroni constant plus two times log two. Divide this thing by root pi and you have some nice cancellation. So that's negative Euler Mascheroni constant plus log two. And from the very same shirt, we spot that the di gamma function evaluated at one should be negative Euler Mascheroni constant. So this implies that I equals 
root pi by 16 times gamma 1 is just 1 and gamma 1 half is root pi as well. So we have pi by 16 now and we have negative Euler Mascheroni minus 2 log 2 and then we have negative Euler Mascheroni constant. No, wait. There's a negative sign already, so the two negatives cancel out. We cancel out the Euler Mascheronis, and finally we're left with pi by 8 with a negative sign and log 2, or we could state this as pi by 8 times log 1 half. That was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram, and if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.